Hello there. I am out of practice with that, to say the least. It is good to be back. I think it's been about three weeks now. It feels like it's been decades, but that's mostly because in the last three weeks, the U.S. Barista Championship happened. We're now post-comp, which is something that is really nice to say finally. And I came back with a trophy. Now this year in the U.S. Barista Championship, I took runner up. So I got second place in the competition, which frankly, I am super happy with. Uh, the competition was great. The competitors were just fantastic. Like the level of competition this year was pretty incredible to be able to just see uh, both from behind the scenes. And then also I got the chance this year to like go sit and watch some routines, which I usually don't get to do. Anyways, Isaiah Shees from Archetype Coffee out in Omaha took first place this year. He is the 2023 U.S. Barista Champion and it is so ridiculously well-deserved. If you can find any recordings of his routine, it was fantastic, highly recommend. Anyways, on a slight side note, if you wanna see any recordings of my routines, I have them all on Instagram this year. Now, the US Barista Champs was not live streamed this year. I live streamed it personally, and I'm trying to figure out if there's any recordings out there that's a, a longer, you know, like horizontal format of the video that I can upload here. Working on that, we'll see. In the meantime, if you wanna see it, it's on Instagram. However, I thought, since I didn't share too much about my signature beverage prior to the routine, I thought I might show it to you now. I'm bearing tradition with <laughs> the fact that I like to give out my signature beverage recipes at least before or definitely after competitions. They're fun to make. This one's a little bit more involved, but if you can make it at home and try it out, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna take my, uh, my smudgy trophy and put it somewhere else, I'll be right back. A little context about the structure and format of how I made this signature beverage. And also, by the way, I'm really, really happy with this drink. I created it pretty much entirely on my own. This is one of the first times that I've really taken on both ingredient and like structural and just like recipe creation entirely. It was really, really fun. And actually this is one of the best scoring signature beverages I have ever made. This got like 5.5s across the board in finals, meaning it was well explained, it tasted good. It, it was just a really good signature beverage. And in barista competitions, the scale is zero to six. So five and a half is like, Really awesome, very, very proud of those scores. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, the structure of this signature beverage is based around the chemical composition of the coffee I was using. For this year's competition, I was using a natural gesha that had undergone carbonic maceration in the processing. That is a mouthful. It essentially means uh, I was using a very fruity coffee. It was very complex. It had a lot of aromatics. It was just really juicy and delicious. And I wanted to talk about why that was so. So I built the ingredients to this recipe based on kind of three categories of how we evaluate coffee, being acidity, sweetness, and bitterness. I wanted to look at kind of the root causes of why we experience that in the flavor of coffee. Now, there are many, many compounds, chemical compounds that you find within coffee that impact how we perceive its flavor. We know a bit about the science of coffee, but frankly, this is a, a section of coffee that we have barely scratched the surface. There is so much more to learn in it. However, we do know some things generally across the board. Acidity in coffee is primarily caused by citric and phosphoric acid. We know that. We can link quinic acid and caffeine to the bitterness that we perceive in coffee. We can also frequently link the processing of carbonic maceration to the juicy flavors that you find in those types of coffees. And typically we perceive juicy flavors to be sweet. A lot of this is perception. I'm using that word very, very specifically. So I started out my journey with wanting to find ingredients that kind of represented the citric and phosphoric acid in acidity. I wanted to find things that represented quinic acid for bitterness. And I wanted to find things that could represent kind of the sweetness that you find through the juicy flavors and the processing. And this led me to some very, very involved ingredients that I'm gonna show you how to make. First of all, we need some espresso. We need to chill that espresso and so, be right back. I want to give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. We're going to be pulling quite a bit of espresso today, but let's start with something a little bit softer to get our palettes ready. My latest trade order just came in and has a great profile for the drink we're going to be making. Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service that makes it easy to discover new coffees and make your best cup at home every day. Trade partners with the nation's top rated independent roasters to send you the best quality coffee you can get. And whether you know what you like or are new to specialty coffee, Trade has you covered. We've talked about a wide array of coffees from Trade, and right now I'm digging into this bag from Onyx Coffee out of Rogers, Arkansas. This coffee is a blend of Tipica and Gesha varieties from Panama. It's fully washed and has a profile with a balanced acidity and some deeper notes of spices and a light nuttiness. It's delicious on espresso and filter and we'll be enjoying it both ways today. 
But if this specific profile isn't for you, then Trade has you covered with over 450 unique coffees to choose from. So if you're ready to get started, right now Trade is offering my subscribers a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com slash MDC. That's drinktrade.com slash MDC for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Welcome back. First thing we need to do is chill our espresso because this signature beverage is gonna be cold, and right now our espresso is very hot. I have two double shots of espresso here. This is approximately 80 grams of espresso in total. If you're making this at home, as I mentioned in that sponsor spot, I recommend looking for a coffee that's gonna be a little bit on the lighter side, something that has a little bit more citrus, maybe a little bit more florals and fruitiness to it. Can't really go wrong, this is a pretty versatile recipe, but just think about the coffee you're using. Anyways pour our shots in. As I have talked about before, this is a hyper chiller. It's a pretty easy product that you see a lot in competition. It is essentially a freezing chamber that has double walled sides of ice around where the espresso drops in. So it basically flash chills without diluting uh, whatever liquid you pour in here. We're gonna go set this off to the side. Let's talk about the ingredients we need. These are our three ingredients. And I'll admit as accessible as I tried to make my signature beverage last year by using ingredients that were easy to make and, and pretty common, I, uh, <laughs> I, I went a, a little bit the opposite way this year. In this little beaker right here, we have clarified milk. In this beaker right here, we have a kiwi caramel. Lastly, in this beaker over here, we have apple juice. Apple juice, easy enough. These two, a little bit more involved. So to talk about the creation of making these at home yourself, I'm gonna leave this to voiceover Morgan who made these ingredients a couple hours ago. All right, we're starting off with our kiwi caramel. Begin by skinning and placing 360 grams of kiwis in a blender and then pulse until you have a puree. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. We'll be running it through a cheesecloth later. Then to a saucepan, add 500 grams of cane sugar and 65 grams of water. We'll put this on medium heat and let that sugar caramelize. This is gonna be a long process, so just trust it and don't touch the sugar too much. You wanna wait until your sugar has reached a deep amber color and is smooth in consistency. Then you're gonna slowly add your kiwi puree. This is gonna sputter and steam quite a bit, so be very careful. But once that kiwi is incorporated and the caramel is smooth again, remove from heat, and then we're gonna run it through a cheesecloth. This process will take a good amount of time, but it will result in something that is smooth, tart, and it's a caramel that's ready to use. Now for our clarified milk. Start by gathering 20 grams of lime juice. Fresh is always preferred. Then we're gonna heat 500 grams of whole milk to about 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do this in the microwave if you want, and it'll depend on your wattage, but it will likely take about two to two and a half minutes. Next, we add our lime juice. Almost immediately, you'll see the curdling occur. Leave your concoction to rest for about 45 minutes before straining it all through a coffee filter. You might have to do this twice. There you go, clarified milk. And those are our ingredients, so all right, back to the video. Okay. You have your ingredients. Let's talk about why we're using these ingredients. So earlier I mentioned, we're looking at sweetness, acidity, and bitterness in coffee. Now in acidity, we have citric and phosphoric acid. Now an ingredient that is very, very high in citric acid is limes. An ingredient that's very high in phosphoric acid is milk. And so when I realized that I was like, I should just combine the two. <laughs> we should just clarify some milk. So that's why this milk clarification happens simply with whole milk and limes. The end ingredient, isn't something that's super enjoyable to drink on its own for sure, but it's really good in addition to everything else. This has a pretty bright acidity to it, a lot of like really heavy lime flavor that adds a lot of balance in the drink. And also the fact that it's a clarified milk adds a lot of texture. It adds like kind of a, a velvety like creaminess to an otherwise maybe a little less texturally interesting drink. That's the reasoning for number one. Now we have bitterness and that we were representing with quinic acid. Now you find quinic acid in a lot of things. It causes bitterness in, in many, many things, but I kind of honed in on the fact that there's a high concentration of quinic acid in young apples. In the apple juice that I used on stage, I made it myself. I juiced Granny Smith apples, so they were very tart. Uh, it was like not a super sweet apple juice, but juicing your own apples is a pretty labor intensive process. So. If you don't wanna do that yourself, you certainly can, but if you don't want to, you can go buy store-bought apple juice. I would just caution you to kind of find the uh, the most simple apple juice you can find. Don't find something that has like added sugars, like the natural sugars occurring in apple juice are plenty. We have some apple juice here. Now, lastly, we have sweetness. And this was kind of like a two-pronged like ingredient. So I wanted to create something that was like a long process. I wanted to create something that had like tropical juiciness to it. And that kind of just led me to stumble on the idea of a kiwi caramel. I wanted to add 
caramel because it has a really deep sweetness. It's also a syrup that takes a long time, which I thought was a fun callback to this coffee's processing. Kiwi was a little bit arbitrary. I just thought it sounded nice. I will also note that this ingredient on its own, the kiwi caramel, is fantastic for desserts. It's like delicious as a topping. So use this in your coffee, yes, but also use it in your baking. Just eat it, it's, it's wonderful. The last half of how we're representing the sweetness and the processing, I'll mention in the actual build of the drink because there's a, a second step to all of this. Let's talk about the assembly of this signature beverage. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of information at you today. It's just because I missed you, it's been a while. I've got a lot to say too. Now for the actual build of our drink, we're gonna be using this thing right here. Now this is most commonly known as a whipping siphon. It's a pretty common like kitchen tool. Essentially, it breaks into two parts. You have the, the main chamber here, and then you also have this, which I guess technically it breaks into three parts. This is your like dispensing nozzle, the head right here. And then in this little chamber, you can add pretty much two things. You can either add nitrogen or you can add CO2. You might recognize these. These are just ISI like soda chargers, these are CO2 siphons. I decided that I wanted to carbonate my signature beverage, first of all, because it's just a fun texture. Like it's just enjoyable, like a sparkling coffee drink. Also in carbonic maceration, in the fermentation that these coffee cherries go through, there are periodic CO2 infusions. So calling back to that processing by using CO2 in the actual build of the drink, it's kind of a nice callback to what this coffee went through. And again, talking and referring to those juicy flavors that represent sweetness in our build. So. CO2 in there. We're not gonna charge it, but we'll just kind of like very lightly screw it on. Set this to the side. Now we're just gonna add all of our ingredients into the main body of the siphon. This is 30 grams of our clarified milk. We're using 25 grams of our apple juice. Then we're using about 18 grams of our kiwi caramel. This was freshly made, so it still has a really nice viscosity to it. It's very easy to pour. However, I have found that if you let this caramel sit and set up, it gets a little bit thick and difficult to use. So if that happens to you, you're more than welcome to add about four grams of just like cold water, stirred up really, really like intensely. That will give a nicer viscosity for pouring and using this caramel without diluting the flavor too much. I had to do that a couple times. It didn't really alter the drink and it was a good solution. But 18 grams of the caramel and then a little bit of water if you need it. Last ingredient, we need some espresso. I like to give this a swirl just to make sure it's like hit all those walls of ice and cooled down. Give this a little bit of a swirl. Then we're gonna screw back on the head of this whipping siphon. Okay, if you haven't used one of these before, you now wanna twist this all the way kind of to completion that will puncture and release all of that CO2 into the drink. We're gonna give this a quick shake to incorporate and kind of activate everything. And then we can decant and enjoy this. Kind of a fun sound. It doesn't happen very often, but occasionally these sort of cartridges will misfire. And so I was very nervous each time I was on stage. It, like it's, it's once, you know, every hundred of course, but I was like, what if it happens this time? Giving this a shake, we're good to go here. Let's get a vessel to decant this into. Now this is actually what I used on stage. You will wanna be careful. This is a little bit explosive, so grab yourself a towel just to kind of cover everything so you don't get splatter. You can see we have increased the volume, the color, the texture of all of this quite a bit. This is now a lot thicker, it's frothier, it's velvety, and that's a combination of ingredients, espresso, and CO2 all interacting together. This recipe is technically enough for four drinks if you each want a single shot. However, if you're both comfortable with having a double shot of espresso in total, this can be for two drinks. And these are the coupe glasses. I served it in there, about five and a half ounces in total. Now this, on its own, is a very nice drink. As you can see here, we kind of have this like head, this frothy head on here that adds a really, really nice soft, fluffy texture. While underneath you have stuff that's a little bit more liquidy, it holds a lot more of the carbonation, so you get this sparkling finish on it. It's really enjoyable. However, it wouldn't be a signature beverage without a little bit of flair. Also, we're missing some aroma on this because while the flavor is really good, it doesn't really smell like much. And as we know, smell is a huge portion of our taste. So let's get some fire. Now this was really fun and I uh, took this from kind of like cocktail garnishing. Uh, we're actually going to flame grapefruit peels over these drinks. Now when you express a grapefruit peel by like 
twisting it or like pinching it or something like that, you're releasing those grapefruit oils that are stuck inside the skin of the grapefruit. Grapefruit oil is very, very aromatic. It, it smells lovely. It pairs really well with the sort of like citrusy, like tropical flavor profile. And that's all well and good, but like it's the USB-C. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very distinctly, I was on a call with one of my coaches, Andrea, and she was like, do you think you could set something on fire? Like, like if you can set something on fire, you should do that. And so that gave me the idea, we're gonna caramelize the citrus oils that are expressed out of the grapefruit peels. Do this carefully. And this is a, not always repeatable just because it depends very much on the grapefruits you get. These are the nicest grapefruits I could find. So ideally they have a lot of oil stored up in them. We just, uh, very embarrassed about this. This is kind of a, a new thing for me. We have our lighter. There we go. Now a little bit slower what I'm doing. Starting my lighter, I'm kind of warming the citrus peel just a little bit, do a little spin over the top of the flame, and then I pinch it really quickly. That pushes out those citrus oils over the flame. It's flammable, it causes it to spark and it caramelizes and spreads out all the oils over the drink. It also smells really good in here right now. Let's do it one more time. So now we have a beverage that had a little bit more visual flair. It now smells like kind of a grapefruit soda, like a grapefruit cream soda almost. And also the addition of those grapefruit aromatics really bring out new flavors in this drink. The flavor calls we had for this beverage, hang on, let's see if I can remember them. I said um, orange sherbet, cream soda, dark chocolate, and then there's one other, and oh, yuzu. <laughs> <laughs> and yuzu is a citrus that has notes of grapefruit and also lemon oil, super pleasant. But yeah, that was my signature beverage this year. I was super, super happy with it. Again, it scored well, which was super exciting and just fun all around. Now this was definitely a lot more labor intensive than ones I've done in the past, but with a few kitchen tools, with a little bit of like elbow grease on these ingredients, it's very achievable at home as well. And honestly, everyone should like put espresso in a whipping siphon. <laughs> it does very good things to the textural and tactile experience. Now this year was a super fun competition season. You know, it's kind of like this entire year feels like it's been just one big competition season starting from last year to worlds to just back around into the next year. But I learned so much. Frankly, diving into a lot more of like the science of coffee was really, really interesting for me personally. It was fun to talk about it on stage. If any of you want more uh, behind the scenes or kind of like just footage around competition and who was involved, I would recommend you go over to my Instagram. I cataloged it a lot more there. As soon as I can get like a more official recording of my routine, I'll probably do another kind of review of it like I've done in the past years, but TBD on when that's gonna happen. Again, if you want to watch the recordings ahead of time and in slightly lower quality on an <laughs> Instagram live stream, they are over on my Instagram as well. I'm gonna go enjoy these because they're a lovely carbonated fun summer coffee beverage. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for providing the coffee that I used today in these drinks. And yeah, it's good to be back. I'm excited for next week. We are about to dive into cold brew season, which I have a lot planned for that. So buckle up. And Morgan Drinks Coffee. I am here on YouTube uh, once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. I hope you had fun. I definitely had fun. I'll see you next time, everyone. Cheers.